So uh, for the motivational word for today, um, maybe you're watching this on YouTube and I want to go ahead and encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can get all our motivational words. Um, I always take it out of our live stream and I put it into a sort of format for you guys on YouTube. So thank you guys for joining the motivation family. And I know maybe you're perusing and cruising through YouTube and you happen upon this crazy guy. But uh, today we're going to be talking about something I think will be encouraging to you guys. And it's the idea that your tears are not wasted. I know when I was younger and I was growing up, when I would cry, when there was really nothing wrong with me, my family would say, look at those crocodile tears. I mean, I don't know if that's just a Southern thing, but that, that's what they would call it when I would be crying, when there's really nothing wrong with me. And, and then there's also the idea of growing up. I had the mistaken idea that real men don't cry because I didn't really see men in my life that really cried. And that's nothing against any of the men in my life. It just I didn't see it very often. So I had the idea that, that men didn't cry. It's just something that you didn't do. You, you didn't cry. And then my brother died of muscular dystrophy, the same disease that I had, and he was 20. And I remember going to his viewing and my grandfather was just in one of the wing back chairs there, just completely beside himself and in tears. I don't know if my sister remembers this, but when I saw my grandfather break down like that, I began to realize that it is okay to cry and that grown men still cry. And maybe you grew up thinking that it was not acceptable to cry in public or it shows weakness to cry, whether you're a man or a woman. Maybe maybe you grew up thinking that crying is weakness and that if you cry, you need to be at home in your closet crying. You don't need to be crying in public. You don't need to, to have the uh, ugly cry face. Yeah. And some people grow up thinking that, but we need to understand, guys, that we all had sorrows in our life. We we all had pain in our lives. And after my dad died, when I was about 12 years old, my aunt gave me a tape. And on that tape was Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. And that song really spoke to me at that time in my life. I know R.E.M. is not a Christian band, quote unquote, but at that time, it's what I needed. And the idea that everybody hurts, everybody has pain, and, and, and it's okay to cry. And as we're thinking about it being okay to cry, sometimes we might feel like our tears are wasted. We might, hear, we might think nobody cares, no one's here to wipe away my tears, so why should I cry? And as I'm crying in agony and as I'm in sorrow, nobody cares anyway. Does anybody really, really care? <laughs> but what does the Bible say? Um, everything we do on the morning motivation, we, we bring it back to God's word. So this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 56, verse 8 and 9. It says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. My enemies will retreat when I call to you for help. I, uh, this I know, God is on my side. So let me set this up for you guys a little bit. This was written by uh, David, who later became king of Israel. And at this time, he was running away from King Saul, and Saul was jealous over David. And his jealousy was often displayed in rage, which was uncontrolled, outrageous, just out of his mind, rage against David. So David's running away from King Saul, and he runs into enemy territory and into the Philistines in a city called Gath. So he is so distraught, he's running away from King Saul, who's a complete maniac. And he runs right into enemy territory, and then they take him before the king there. And, and David is just overwhelmed. He's just completely 
emotional and everyone is against him. David didn't do anything wrong. And he, he cries out to the Lord and he's in such distress there that the Bible says he begins to act like a crazy man because he thought the Philistines were going to kill him. So David starts to act like a crazy man and they say, get this crazy man out of here. So the Lord preserved his life from him acting like a crazy man and they got rid of him. But David recounts that, that moment in his life and he says that God keeps track of his sorrows and that God collects his tears as if he's collecting them in a bottle. And then look at the last part of that verse. He thunders out, God, guys, God is on my side. So that's some great encouragement today that no matter what you're going through today, I want to re remind you today. Maybe you're going through a difficult time in your life today. I, I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know what kind of emotional pain you're feeling tonight. I don't, this morning, I don't know um, what's going on. I don't know if you got a loved one that's sick, like, like Christina's dad. I, I don't know what you're going through this morning. And maybe you feel alone. Maybe you feel that nobody cares about you, that maybe you're, you're in sorrow, you're wasting your tears and nobody cares. But David says that God keeps track of your, your, your sorrows. God has your tears as if they're in a bottle. That means they are dear to him. And in that culture that when someone would die, sometimes they would collect tears in a bottle and they would put that bottle with the body when, when they bury the body as a, a token of, of honor and love and, and appreciation for the one who is deceased. So David uses that imagery in this psalm that God keeps track of your tears and that God cares about what you're going through today. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know I got a God in heaven who knows what you're going through. And I do know of the surety that he cares about what you're going through. It's important to him. Now, I want to give you guys just a few action steps. I always try to leave you guys with something that you can put into your life today. It's great to know that David knew that God knew his sorrows and that, that David understood that his tears were not wasted, but God collected them and knew of them. It's great to know that, that God delivered him from the Philistines and that God delivered David from King Saul. But how can I understand that God know, knows my pain and keeps track of my sorrow and my tears? Here's some steps you can take this morning that you can put into practice today to know that your tears are not wasted. Number one, remind yourself that you're not alone in your sorrow or your tears, even Jesus Right. I know a lot of times when you go through sorrow, a lot of times when you are very sorrowful and maybe you're crying, you feel like no one else in the world would understand. And, and you feel so alone at that time. But remember that even Jesus wept. It's okay to cry and, and your tears are not wasted. Number two, reaffirm to yourself that your tears are not wasted because God is keeping track. Reaffirm to yourself today. Say, yes, God is keeping track of my tears. My tears are not wasted. God loves me today. He cares about me today. He knows I'm hurting today. He knows that I'm alone today. He knows that I'm tired of being in my apartment because of COVID-19. God knows. And sometimes we need to, to reaffirm that to ourselves. Remind ourselves. Number three. Write it out. Now, this is for those that, that need to write or you need to express yourself some other, other way than just listening to me or audibly or reading something on the screen. So here's a good thing for you to do today. Write it down. God is on my side in blank. So you got a piece of paper right there. Maybe you, you got your Bible there. Or you want to type it out there and, and have it there for you to remember. So do this exercise sometime, sometime today. God is on my side in blank. And put that somewhere where you can see it so that you know that God is on your side like David knew.
and that your tears are not wasted. So do that activity. It will be very helpful for you. And lastly, unbottle, okay? Unbottle up your emotions and pour them out at the feet of Jesus. Um, tears, I see tears as the release thou of your soul. And release vowels are there so that you can release pressure so that something doesn't explode. Um, it's like a pressure cooker, you know, those in the South cook with pressure cookers. And I use Southern illustrations because I'm a Southern boy that grew up in the South. And that, that's one of the things that yeah, you cook with the pressure cooker, you know, it sits on the stove. But tears are like that release valve, guys, that if you don't release your tears, that tension and that emotion will just be bottled up inside of you until it may explode. And when it explodes, it it may not be too too pretty, and it may really be detrimental to you. So unbottle your emotions today, guys, and pour them at the feet of Jesus in prayer this morning.